Today's lesson is on factoring polynomials. And I want you just to recall the definition of what a factor is. And that's simply that when you multiply two or more numbers, we call those factors, and that gives you a product, such as two times three equals six. So the factors of six, two times three, but there are also other factors of six, such as one times six. Since we're going to be factoring, and a factor times a factor is equivalent to a product, this means, therefore, you can check your answer by multiplying. On day five notes, we went over the rules for multiplying terms, and we also multiplied expressions such as x plus 3 times x plus 3. And to do that, we distribute the x through the parentheses, so we get x squared plus 3x, and then we distribute the 3 through the parentheses to get 3x plus 9. You will always be able to combine your two middle terms, and you get x squared plus 6x plus 9 is the final answer. So what we're going to do today in factoring is we're going to start with this product and make our way back to the given factors. What multiplies to give us the trinomial x squared plus 6x plus 9? So at the top of the page, or the top of our diagram here, our flow chart, I have step number one, which is to put the polynomial in standard form. It's typically given in standard form, but if it's not, you want to do that, which is highest to lowest exponent. This expression is in standard form. Once you've got it in standard form, the first thing you want to look for when factoring is to factor out or look for that GCF, which stands for greatest common factor. When you do that, it's going to look like the GCF out front and then one set of parentheses. And when you factor, you undo that multiplication so it's in parentheses is the quotient. Okay? Once you factor out the GCF, you then want to look for three different types of factoring. One of those types is called the difference of two squares, or the difference of squares. And you may know this as dots. There's the D-O-T-S. Difference, we're going to see subtraction, and then two squares, such as a squared and b squared. So an example of a dots type of factoring expression would be something like x squared minus 16. It is the difference. It is, again, the difference of two squares. Anything that has an even exponent is going to be a perfect square, and then 16 is a perfect square. So that factors, and dots always factors into two binomials. So to start, it's going to be x times x to give us the x squared, and then the two factors are positive 4 and negative 4, because I want that outside term of negative 4x, an inside term of positive 4x to give me 0x's. I don't see an x term there, so I don't need to write the 0x. 0x is just 0. Also, you can say that they just simply cancel out, and we're left with the x times x, which is x squared, and then the positive 4 times negative 4, which is negative 16. Another example, let's give or have a coefficient in front of the x squared, so I have 
x squared minus 4. Again, you're going to set up two parentheses. The signs will always be different to give you that negative product. And that's going to be 2 times negative 2 to get the negative 4. And then your leading term of 9x squared is going to be 3x times 3x. So that would be, writing it larger, 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. Again, in the FOIL, and this is where you can check yourself to make sure you did it correctly, 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Outside, 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. And you should, again, if the binomials are exactly the same but opposite signs, you should get the same term when you distribute the second term all the way through in the middle. But it's going to be the opposite sign because your binomials have the opposite sign. Therefore, these two terms can cancel out. That's the additive inverse. So we're left with 9x squared minus 4. So not that you need to check every time, but it's a good idea to check so you can strengthen those factoring skills and understand the process. So if it's not dots, so if it's not two terms, it's going to be three terms. So that's your trinomial factoring. Okay, which looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to start easy today and every problem on this sheet is going to have an a value of 1. So that's going to make it really easy to factor. Okay, so what we're looking at is factors of C that add to B. And I'm going to go back up to the expression at the top of the page. And this product, this 6x in the middle was the sum of these two numbers. The 9 is the product of those two numbers. So the middle term is the sum. The last term is the product of those two numbers within the binomials. So factors of C, because this is your product, that add to B, because that's the B is the sum. So sum and product. So let's look at x squared plus 5x plus 6. So all the factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and then 2 times 3. I set up my every trinomial factors into two binomials. So we have x times x. If I have a positive product, that means the signs are going to be the same. And if they add to a positive term, they're both going to be positive. So the two numbers here that add to 5 are the 2 and the 3. So x plus 2 times x plus 3. A shortcut in checking to make sure you're right, again, is to see if the inner and outer terms, teachers call this the little smile, so positive 2x for that. The big smile, positive 3x, it does combine to the positive 5x which I have here, so I know I'm correct in the factors. So you've checked. It's not the difference of two squares or dots. It's not trinomial, so the last possible option would be your special case. In your special case factors, such that the middle term is 2bx and this is b squared. And I'll show you what I mean by 2b and then b squared. So an example is x squared plus 10x plus 25. Again, it's a trinomial, so it factors into two binomials. I'm looking at the signs. I have a positive product. So I'm going to have the signs as both plus as they combine to a positive sum and they have to be the same. x times x is x squared. I'm looking at the factors of 25, so that's 1 and 25. 5 and 5 
but they have to add to 10. So that's going to be the 5 and 5. 5, 5. Now if you look at the 5's and then look back at the original expression, here's the double of the same number, and then last is the, that number squared. So the middle term is double the 5's, and then the last one is the 5 squared of the product. So still sum and product, but what's special is that these two binomials are exactly the same. So another way to write this answer is x plus 5 squared. Below that, I mentioned what a prime factor is. Recall your prime numbers um, from middle school. A prime number is a number uh, that had only two factors, one in itself. So a prime factor is a factor that cannot be factored. So therefore, its only factors are one and itself. On the back page for examples, I just want you to identify all the types of factoring listed below that are, not, uh, that are necessary for the given expression. Okay, so you can pause, go ahead and do these, one through four, and then press play. The answers to one through four, number one is the difference of two perfect squares. I have the even exponent and then the two squares, so this is dots. And looking at that as well, there is no GCF. And number two, b squared and 16, there is no GCF. It's not dots, even though that these two expression and number are perfect squares, it's not the difference. So this is prime, as it's not a trinomial. In number three, both 6 and 12 have a greatest common factor of 6, so this is a GCF type factoring. In number four, there is no GCF, however, it is a trinomial which can be factored. Okay, so again, number four, that was a trinomial factoring, and then let's look at questions 5 through 14. Now, I would first look at every single one of them and identify which ones have the greatest common factor because that is our first step. In number two, 18, or in number five rather, 18 and 22 have a greatest common factor of two. They also have an x a part of both of their terms, so I'm going to factor out a two and an x. I'm also, when you, both terms are negative, you can factor out the negative to give a positive quotient. So if I divide this by negative 2x, what's my quotient? Or you can ask yourself, negative 2x times what gives me negative 22x, and that would be 11. Negative 2 times what is going to give you a negative 18x cubed, and that's a positive 9x squared. So either way, if you want to divide, if I were to divide this by negative 2, 22 divided by 2 is 11, and negative over negative is positive. Uh, divided by the 2x, rather, the x is cancel, and then 18 over 2 is 9 x cubed divided by x, remember when you're dividing terms, there is an exponent there, we subtract the exponents, x to 3 minus 1 is x squared. So you can do it either way. In number 6, there is no GCF. 7, there is no GCF. 8, and looking through the rest of the sheet, I do not see any questions with a greatest common factor. Numerically, no common factor, and then also with each expression or each term in the expression, I do not see a common variable. All right, so number six, you can rewrite it, x squared plus 16x plus 64 if you're more comfortable with the x squared up front, so it's a trinomial that's going to factor into two binomials. So x times x up front gives us the x squared. And then again, what adds to 16 and multiplies sum and product 
to 64. And looking at the signs, I have a positive product. It combines to a positive number, so they're both plus. And then 8 times 8 is 64, and 8 plus 8 is 16. And I'm going to rewrite my final answer as x plus 8 squared. You don't have to, but since you can, I'm going to simplify that. Number 7. Again, if you're uncomfortable, you can switch it to x squared minus 6x plus 9. As we mentioned, there's no GCF. So trinomial factors into two binomials, x times x. I have a positive product, so that means the signs are the same. And since this time they combine to negative 6, both signs are negative. So what multiplies to 9? Again, here's your product. And what adds to 6? So it's not 1 times 9, but it's going to be 3 times 3. 3 times 3, and negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9, and then negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. Number 8, we're seeing a higher leading uh, term with a power greater than 2. So what multiplies times itself to give you x to the fourth? That would be x squared. And notice in each case, every time I factor, x to the first times x to the first, the ones are there even though I don't write them, okay? That's the term that's in the middle. So if you look at your middle term, you can kind of cheat. That's an x squared, so it's going to be x squared times x squared. Factors of 40, again, the signs are the same. They add to a positive, so it's plus plus. We've got 1 times 40, 2 times 20, not divisible by 3, 4 times 10, 5 times 8. Which ones add to 22? That's 2 and 20. So my factors are x squared plus 2 and x squared plus 20. Number 9. What's different about number 9 is that it has both an x and a y term in the middle. It is an x to the first and a y to the first, so I'm going to start with x an x, and since the last term has a y in it, the parentheses are going to end with a y. It's a negative product, so that means my signs are different. So the factors of 14, 1 and 14, 2 and 7, if I have opposite signs, so let's say negative positive, negative positive, it has to combine to 5. Well, this combines to 13. This one combines to positive 5. All right, so I know I'm going to use 2 and 7, but instead of the positive 5, I want a negative 5. So I'm going to switch it. Instead of a negative 2, I'm going to have a negative 7. Switch the signs to get the negative 5 instead of the positive, and positive 2. Again, you can always check yourself by distributing. So we have the x times x, which is x squared. 2y times negative 7y, the product is negative 14y squared. So then the middle term is the sum of those two. So 2y times x is positive 2xy. And then 2y times negative 7y, or I'm sorry, I did that one, now I gotta do this one. First, I gotta highlight. First, I never did outside. So outside is the one that I was missing. Outside is negative two times seven is 14. Or I'm sorry, it's not 14. It's what I get for recording at the end of the day. Is negative seven x times y is xy. And these two terms do combine to that negative 5xy. So it is a little sloppy. I'm going to write it here. The factors are x plus 2y times x minus 7y. Number 10. Number 10, again, if I set up my two parentheses, because it's trinomial, it had no GCF. I'm looking at the factors of 8, so there's 1 times 8, 2 times 4. 
it has a negative product, so it's going to be plus, minus for my signs. Factors of A that combine to 2. So right now I'm ignoring the x to the A and the x to the 2A. The factors of 8 that combine to 2, again, if I look at the signs being opposite, this one combines to a 7. Ignore the signs. This one combines to a 2. I want a negative 2, so I'm going to have a negative 2 times a positive 4. So positive 4, negative 2. Because I'm going to switch the signs to get a positive 2 for a sum. And then again, I said you could cheat. This middle term is going to be as it was up in this question here, that's going to be the term that leads your binomials. So it's x to the a times x to the a, because when I multiply x to the a as a check, x to the a times x to the a is x to the 2a. Outside is negative 2x to the a. Inside, positive 4x to the a. And then negative 8 to give us a sum in the middle of 2x to the a, which checks. So the factors are right here, x to the a plus 4, x to the a minus 2. Number 11, um, again, there is no GCF, so it's going to factor into two binomials. This does not have three terms, though. So it's not a special case, it's not a trinomial. Is it the difference of two perfect squares? Well, 49 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. It is an, an even exponent. y squared is a perfect square. And 1 ninth is because the numerator of 1 is a perfect square and the denominator of 9 is a perfect square. So to start the parentheses, it's 7x, 7x, which will give you the 49x squared. Negative, so my signs are different to get that negative product. And we have a zero sum in the inside. That's why we don't see a middle term. So then it's going to finish with y times y to get the y squared. But with the fraction, set up your fraction bar. The square root of 1 is 1, or 1 times 1 is 1 for the numerator. And then 3 times 3 gives you the 9 in the denominator. Number 12 is also the difference of two perfect squares as each variable, each base has an even exponent as well as the coefficients are perfect squares. So I set up the two parentheses, it's going to be 4x squared, 4x squared to multiply to the 8x to the fourth. Signs are different, positive, negative, to get that negative product. Again, zero sum. And then 9y times 9y gives us the 81y squared. To finish, this is the difference of two perfect squares. This 10a is even. If you think of 2a, 4a, 6a, 8a, 10a, it is even. So we're going to have 6x plus 1, 6x minus 1 to have the different signs, and 1 times 1 is 1. But this 10a, these two terms when I multiply, have to give me the product of 36x to the 10a. And when we multiply terms, we add the exponents. So it's going to be 5a plus 5a, which gives us 36x to the 10a. Applying that here, again, there is no GCF. It is the difference of two perfect squares. 8 times 8 is 64. And at the end, 11 times 11 is 121. Sign, one of them is going to be plus, one of them is going to be minus. So to get the x to the 4b, that's going to be x to the 2b, because 2b plus 2b is 4b. We keep the base x. And then it's going to be y to the c to get 2c, because c plus c is 2c. So those are the factors there. So again, just to recap, always check to see if there is a GCF. If there's not a GCF, check dots first. Is it the difference of two perfect square? And that's the easiest to factor. And then if it's a trinomial, the middle term is the product. I'm sorry, the middle term is the sum, looking at this here. The middle term is the sum, the last is the product. Okay. 
And then also, too, it could be one of your special cases that factors into two equivalent binomials. I don't see one of those on the back. That must have been on the front. Yes, right here. So here's your special case because it factors into two binomials that are the same.